All right, so thank you for coming and supporting our conservation education programs. Um, my name is Abby Zarnecki. I do the angler and aquatic education for the Nevada Department of Wildlife with me to help moderate today, make sure I don't miss any questions from you guys or any comments or anything like that is Nicole Haddad. She's our conservation aide. She helps with all aspects of outdoor education. Um, and we're all part of the conservation education program. So we do hunting, fishing, wildlife education and urban wildlife. So we do have a fishing guide we publish every single year. Um, the waters change. Um, I'm gonna unmute you, Mr. Lee. Keep yourself muted if you have any background noise, thank you. Um, the fishing guide, you can follow along with that. That way if you have any more questions, it has the map in the middle and details on all our waters. I'm, um, because we have such a small group, I am giving you guys the option of asking questions verbally later on. So as you're joining in and then um, one of our Trout in the Classroom teachers is joining us as well and promoted him to a panelist. Haven't done that on our webinars yet. We'll see how that goes. All right. So all this information is in the fishing guide as well and on our website, endow.org, which is the bottom of the end of my email address. You can see that there under my face. Um, in the middle of the fishing guide is the Southern Nevada region map, and that's what I'm going to focus on, especially for channel catfish. We definitely stock them more down here than in the upper regions because their water is colder and our water is nice and steady warm. Um, catfish, pretty much you can fish year round in the urban ponds. Um, so before you get out and go, um, Make sure you have your fishing license, endowlicensing.com or through our website and it'll take you right to get a license. Um, especially nowadays, you do not have to print it out. You screenshot it or save it and download it to your phone. And that's what you would show the game warden if they're, when they're out and about. Um, also have a fishing checklist so you don't forget a fishing rod or don't forget your bait, especially in the fridge. I even do checklists, especially when I do events and make sure I don't leave the bait in the fridge. I figure I have everything in the truck ready to go and sometimes you leave your bait in the, fit, in the fridge, especially uh, some sweet corn or something like that. The catfish love that stuff. Um, if you're taking a younger person, they do have to have a fishing license if they're between the age of 12 and 17. They only have to get a junior comp and it can be a combo license too. And it's like, 15 or $16 for a whole year. So it's a great opportunity for the youth to have their own fishing license, be able to catch their own fish. It's pretty awesome and have their full limit. Um, know what is legal and what is not. We'll go over some species at the end that can often get mistaken for a carp or a catfish, especially when they're feeding on the bottom um, and they are endangered. So they're heavily protected and um, our urban ponds are all three fish limits except for carp. So carp are not uh, protected and not regulated. And so there isn't a limit on carp, um, but we do have a three fish limit for game species, which is everything from bluegill. Um, they are regulated and trout in the fall and winter, and then channel catfish and bass. Um, and check your weather. Um, Make sure when the clouds start forming, get out an app. I use a NOAA app is great. Even um, Google's actually gotten pretty good on my phone for letting me know that it's going to rain at three o'clock and it's been pretty accurate or 310. Um, so definitely check the weather because those winds you do not want to be stuck on the water or in uh, Willow Beach is a one that you don't want to be stuck near that area when the rain comes and it'll come right up the river headed north and you can definitely get trapped and um, we saw a few cars get trapped a couple months ago or about a month ago. All right. um, so I wanted to tell you guys we are focusing on the middle one the channel catfish. That's what we stock here. That's what we have. We don't have blue catfish but um, I wanted to also show you the difference. Um, our waters are not that big for to handle a blue catfish, honestly. 
Um, so when you see those monster catfish and everybody's like, why can't we have fish that big? Uh, because it's not the species we have here. So we don't have blue catfish. Um, and you can see that they exceed a small child. <laughs> They're over 100 pounds. Um, and then flat flathead catfish as well. Um, but we definitely have channel catfish. And we're a big one here is probably 10 pounds. And it'll, it could break your line if you're not careful. So we'll go over some of that towards the end too. Um, but 30 pound uh, would be something like you would rig up for Lake Mead and try to go after that big striped bass as well. So um, we are definitely going for more of the 10 to 30 pound monster catfish here. And those are considered record size fish, not the 100 pounds. So you don't have to get that ocean rig up to catch catfish out here. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we would go through the website. And then this is also like, if you're not taking notes or you wanna check another species, um, I already did bluegill and um, we already, yeah, I think, oh yeah, I've only done bluegill for our series so far. So um, I just wanted to kind of go through this with you. So you go to our website, um, it says hunting, fishing, boating. So we're gonna to go to fishing and I'm going to make sure you can see my mouse. There we go. So we clicked on fishing or fish and we're going to click on where to fish, which is down in the middle. We're gonna click where to fish. Kind of silly, but where to fish. And we're going to go for species because we're going to talk about channel catfish. So you can see all the species of fish. Um, so yeah, here's bluegill and it tells you all kinds of stuff. So we're going to click on channel catfish. And I am focusing on Clark County um, for the southern region. We don't stock them in um, the southern region goes up to Tahoe or sorry, not Tahoe, Tonopah, about halfway there, Tonopah. Perch Wildlife Management Area below Ely, Nevada, and outside Peoch is um, Echo Canyon and Spring Valley State Park, or people call it Eagle Valley Reservoir. Um, those we do not have channel catfish in. But um, I do want to add, we do have black bullhead catfish in both of the, in um, Kirch and in Key Pittman, and you can catch 50 of them. They would love for you to catch as many black bullhead catfish, not to exceed 50 as you can. So, um, but uh, they're not regulated. They're not intended to be here. So we don't have them on the website yet. So for Clark County, you have your waters here. Um, say we click on, I can't remember which one we did. I think I kept it general. So if we do Colorado River, and then it would show up here and over here on the right. Let me move us down. There we go. Move us down. Um, Lake Mead is this whole area here and you can see the Nevada border on the far right side, uh, the east side of South Cove. So they, for some reason, Google Maps sees when we put in Lake Mead, it put our angling got our fishing marker right over here at South Cove, but you don't wanna go that far for catfish. Um, it, it pretty much is just the Boulder Basin because it's warmer. This definitely cools off. Even in the summer, it does not get that warm. Um, so you're gonna wanna look for catfish in this Boulder Basin and then our urban ponds here um, and Mesquite's an urban pond. Um, I don't believe we've been able to stock catfish this year. I don't know if we're gonna be able to um, they just redid their pond and then hike goes up here more. But if you um, go to the website and click on the map, this actually becomes interactive. And then um, you can go through any of these waters and it gives a little description of the water itself and what fish are in there. And this is something we're working on right now too. And um, it's gonna get bigger and better. And so it'll be an awesome reference guide. All right, so again, in the fishing guide, you're going to be able to, um, in the middle, right by the fishable waters map, is the key. 
And so you can see over here is Clark County and here's all lakes and reservoirs for Clark County, ponds, and then Lake Mead and Mojave. And you can see CC based on the abbreviations over here are channel catfish. So you can double check. We have channel catfish in all these urban ponds. Definitely not at Cold Creek, too small for them. Um, and Sunset Park, there are some great channel catfish pulled out of Sunset Park. And um, yeah, so you can go through all these and double check. And then um, I had brought up um, Sorry, I'm looking for it to Heiko, which is Nesbitt Lake, here we go, under Lincoln County. And that's at Gone Eagle and Pranigat. Um, Pranigat, supposedly they have had crappie and bluegill and bass in there. Um, we honestly, other than carp, it's really hard to see any other fish. I have seen some bass pulled out of there very rarely. So um, that would definitely be an option to stop if you have time, see if you can catch some bass on the way north, uh, but the water's gonna be fluctuating here soon too. They do a lot of maintenance over the summer. Sorry, back to channel catfish. Um, so on page 20 and 21 are all kinds of fish species um, and with a little description. So if you look at the channel catfish, um, It'll also give you a good little description of the tail here and um, and the difference between a channel catfish and a black bullhead catfish or blue or whatever like that and that they're found in warm waters and um, the barbels are small on the top of their head and then a lot longer on the bottom. All right. So just a few fun facts. Channel catfish are managed and regulated for recreation fishing. It is one of the popular, it is the, I found a, it's said a different, few different ways, but as a catfish species, it is one of the most common catfish species across the U.S. And they get 20 to 52 inches long. Honestly, like a 20 inch one is not that big. It's just a really long fish. Um, and I would say, honestly, like we do stock one to two pounds and they grow pretty quick. So you can get them up to like five to 58 pounds. 58 pounds is our record. So that's why I put that one in there. And then um, we do check their creel surveys. So we can only stock so much uh, for them to survive well in a habitat. We'll dive more into that in a little bit, but we do check on um, how people are catching them and how well they're doing. All right, so you can definitely see this guy hiding deep in the weeds. Um, so one more reason to be careful with how you set up your hooks. You can definitely get stuck on all these branches really easily. But the catfish really do love um, ponds, rivers, lakes, uh, weedy grounds, and rocky. Um, cover anywhere they can cover and stay in the shallows. And um, uh, they actually hide in some riffles too when they're in these big riffers and you can find them in coves and along the edges of coves, especially in Lake Mead. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat um, and then or add them to the Q and A. Q and A. Don't want you to forget your questions. All right. Um, so awesome slide here on some catfish hotspots. Uh, we use the Fish Brain app a lot to kind of see what people are catching. And that way, you know, we don't have to be friends on Facebook and we can still brag about what we're catching. Uh, so it's a nice little hotspot and um, so one, uh, I think she put it in here, you can follow certain waters. So Hemingway Wash, you can actually follow that water and anytime someone catches a fish out of it, you can find it um, or it'll pop up on your phone as a push notification. Same with Willow Beach, Mojave, 
Um, all the way down at the bottom out of Laughlin is Big Bend State Recreation Area. Great place to catch catfish, stripers, and trout in the winter. So I definitely recommend getting down there. Sorry, my mouse took off. There we go. And um, usually it asks you when you upload a picture if you can put what you caught it with and so you can see what they're eating and anchovies have definitely been the ticket on Lake Mead and Mojave in that whole Boulder Basin area. So that's where um, or Hemingway Wash is technically the Hemingway Fishing Pier area and that's right outside the marina through Boulder City. All right. So best catfish bait, almost anything that has a smell. Um, sorry, try that again. There we go. So uh, people will make them. Um, uh, and so it's hard as I was collecting information, I was making sure I didn't miss anything, but I believe this, you, it's hard to find a channel catfish eating a small fish, but it is definitely possible because it's in their instincts. They're very opportunistic fish. So channel catfish can eat small fish, but they're definitely going to prefer a worm over it or crayfish. That's definitely, but if they're, they don't have crayfish in their environment, they're not necessarily going to go after them. They don't know what they are. Um, and especially if it's a stocked channel catfish, like from us, um, they come from a farm and they're eating worms and insects that, um, or stink bait from the farm that we get them from when, before we stock them. So definitely think of something like that. Um, they love sugary foods. That's why I was saying the sweet corn and um, sticky foods like livers. And um, again, while I was collecting all this, I found uh, Catfish Edge had some great information and uh, some, everyone always says chicken livers and they usually do, but I guess you can get turkey livers and they're a little easier to deal with. So that's definitely an option for the catfish, uh, turkey livers instead of chicken livers. Um, but they like something with a big scent. So in the picture here to the left, you can see the red mixture. They'll take cherry juice and reduce it and soak hot dogs. They'll soak uh, lunch meat. You can see the picture above the catfish has just a piece of meat on a big hook. Um, octopus hooks, well, sorry, that's the next subject, but um, the hook, you definitely want the hook or the, um, they have the catfish baits to hold stink baits, and you can actually stuff it down in there and make sure the hook's just sticking out a little bit. Um, so lots and lots of options, but you definitely want to see where the catfish are and kind of check the waters out before you dive right into it. Um, so worst case scenario is throw an earthworm out there to start. Um, and um, they have been, since they're so opportunistic, they've been found to eat small birds, like little grebes, the cute little uh, ducks. Um, they actually protect their ducks on their back because they're so small when they start venturing out. So um, cool little instinct that those ducks have. All right, so if you'd, tips to catch that catfish, little things that are gonna help along the way. Make sure you have a good strong rod, especially if you know that there's big catfish. If you've been on Fish Brain and seen someone catch an eight pound catfish, definitely make sure you have a nice strong rod. And on the side of the fishing rod, it'll say medium, lightweight, whatever. So definitely go with a medium. Um, make sure you have circle hooks or like the octopus hooks, something that's gonna hook in it'll be easier to catch that catfish and it'll also um, hold your bait better too so they can't suck it right off. Um, so that's one reason some people like to use treble hooks but honestly a single hook's great. Um, just making sure it's a little bigger and it'll hold that bait well. But all, honestly um, depending on the catfish our stocked ones are only like one maybe two pounds um, so they're only this big, so the mouth's only going to be like a couple of inches. Um, so make sure the hook's not too big. Um, uh, and so 
A 10 to 12 pound test is definitely good, even if you're going after that two pound um, catfish. And uh, definitely recommend it. And it's hit or miss, but uh, one of the things people like to try out is the high vis fishing line. So they'll get it in different colors. You can get it in, I would definitely recommend more of a green color here. Uh, since our water is more green, you can see in the background of the PowerPoint, that's a uh, Floyd Lamb Park. Um, sometimes it also can blend in with the light rays uh, at different depths of the water. So people try orange and then there's red as well. Um, and anchor your water, especially for Lake Mead or somewhere like that. We do, rec um, you can, my mouse is acting up. Um, definitely want to put down an anchor that is going to hold it for that water. So I have, especially for our equipment, for our programs, we, um, we have different weights. So if I'm at Lake Mead, I have it rigged up a certain way. If I have, if I'm taking a group out to the urban ponds, definitely a smaller weight. And you definitely, I do recommend for Southern Nevada waters, a sliding sinker. Don't lock it into a certain part of your line. That's exactly how it's gonna get ripped off in the water. Um, it might be a monster catfish, but it might just be that big rock at the bottom of the lake. Or um, Floyd lambs really, you can see the trees right against the shoreline. Those roots go right into the water and people get snagged on them all the time and lose really nice lures um, because it's just, that's just how that water is. Um, so definitely have the right weight and anchor for that water um, so that your line is moving to catch their attention, but not too much. You don't want them to lose where that scent came from. Um, so in this picture for this uh, slip sinker rig, they have the hook right on the bottom in this picture, but you can also, in the, my next point was the peg float. You would put a little float peg right along here and it just, just a little small one, just enough to raise it up off the bottom of the water just a little bit, especially if they're not all the way on the bottom, um, you know, going across the bottom, uh, you might want it just a little bit above. And also so you don't get stuck. Um, so a cool thing too is they do like noise. Um, again, they're opportunistic, they're looking around. Um, you can actually, and I've seen it on Lake Mead, I think last fall, uh, some of the catfish were hitting on rattle traps. So noise can actually be an option. So you can even get little, um, little beads that make noise on the hook. And so um, noise can attract it. And then just learn your waters. Definitely, if you like fishing, get out and fish as much as possible, especially if you aren't too far. Lake Mead's only from the center of Vegas, it's maybe 40 minutes. Um, from Henderson, it's only 30, 20 to 30 minutes. And um, same from the east side of town. And so uh, just learn your waters, uh, focus on a couple of waters and go out there over and over. Um, if you are on Facebook, there's a bunch of great fishing groups. And those guys, when you see them catching those fish, literally they are going all the time. And they are learning that water, they're seeing what they're attracted to and trying it over and over again. Um, so here's a website too, that Catfish Edge, and you can look all this stuff up too. Um, so we do a fish, a weekly fishing report, Nicole and I, and uh, for the southern region, every region has their own fishing report. And so definitely double check that. Um, it also goes out in the review journal, so you should be able to find it online. And it is posted at Sportsman's Warehouse uh, right by their door. Um, and they're really good about updating it. So definitely check that fish report before you go out, especially if you go get bait at the sports store. We have it up on the wall for you. Um, they do really good with it. Um, and so this, we print it in the fishing guide of where we stock. And um, we definitely take July off because they don't do well transporting. Um, so we don't stock catfish in July. You can see the gap there. So it's April to October minus July. 
um, in all the urban ponds. And so we do stock Lorenzi too. I don't know why it's not listed though, but Lorenzi as well. And you can always email me. Um, it's almost like texting me, um, especially right now. I'm connected to the computer 40 hours a week and uh, can't really go out and teach any classes right now, but hopefully soon. And um, send an uh, email to me or Nicole um, and let you know if you have any questions. All right, so here's those endangered fish that we I wanted to make sure you guys saw. Um, they're up at Desert Shores is one of the rehab places. They're all across the Colorado River. That was their native home and now they're endangered. So we have the humpback chub, we have the razorback sucker, we have the bony tail chub as well. And so, especially if you're looking down in, it's gonna look like a carp, but it's not. So, you know, kind of recognize these guys. If you catch them, put them right, take, you know, feel free to take a picture, but make sure they get them right back in the water um, and let us know that you caught them. That way we know like, um, if they're biting, honestly, for some reason, maybe, you know, they have a loss of food source. So it's always good to know and to kind of notice where they're at in the waters. Um, please recreate responsibly when you go out. Um, you know, kind of stick close to home so you don't have to um, mess with people too much. Practice social distancing. And honestly, social distancing is just basic angler ethics. Nobody wants to be fishing within somebody's fishing pole length of them. So that's a general rule. Uh, fishing pole is anywhere from six feet to 10 feet, depending on how big the fish you are fishing for. So definitely give your fellow angler that much room at least. And depending on the scenery as you know, the land structure as well. So um, even at one of our fishing clinics, we had a father daughter come out with our junior angler. He's showing them the tricks, but you can see all the way down to the left is another family under the trees. Um, Willow Beach, our, our uh, example picture for Willow Beach is actually a group of people that all know each other um, and that we're helping each other cast out. So um, they are on top of each other. And there were a few times we did have to untangle their line. So just give everybody some room. Um, if it's really busy, honestly, find somewhere else. The fish are going to be overwhelmed by that much traffic too. So it's not beneficial to fish right next to somebody else. And wash your hands. Um, I do recommend soap and water. The hand sanitizer, that alcohol can actually break down monofilament really bad. So um, I don't recommend hand sanitizer when you're fishing much. So try to do some soap and water when you're out and about, uh, especially if you're touching the line. And just be prepared. You got your fishing license, you're ready to go. Whatever you pack in, pack out, go ahead and bring a bag to take it all with you just in case. Um, check your weather conditions. Every you, That's why they're called flash, flood, flash floods in Southern Nevada. And they will start as early as end of June, July. I think last year we had a bunch in July and not so many, in, so much in August. So just check the weather before you head out and be careful. Um, check our fishing report so um, you know if we stocked that week too we will let you know well we'll let you know the following week or um, if we know early enough we'll be able to print it for you and if it's your first time catching a fish or you take somebody and it's their first time catching a fish um, takemefishing.org has some awesome resources and certificates so i'd be more than happy to help you get a certificate for your first catch all right, so if we have any questions, let us know. Hopefully we'll be doing more classes. We teach everything from bluegill fishing for, with families, um, take the little ones. I have some practice. Um, if you have all ages of children, I do start the little ones on with the casting plugs and they think they're fishing too. Uh, helps with helping the older kids that are ready to cast and release better. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll be doing classes soon. We'll be doing webinars every week. This will definitely be a regular thing. Um, and then there is a survey afterwards. So if uh, you could fill in the survey 
as you leave. That would be awesome. Thank you. And uh, type in if you're looking for a certain class on something else. Uh, we'll be doing striped bass soon and black bass. So that'll be large mouth and small mouth black bass. Sorry. And um, hoping to get a guest speaker for you guys. One of the guys that goes out every week and has his own tips and tricks for you. So we'll have some guest speakers throughout the series. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. And hopefully I'll see you at the next one.